to the online church as we celebrate today, Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. Every now and then I take a look at the liturgical calendar of the church to see what the church is celebrating. And today the church is celebrating Pentecost Sunday. In other words, the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost. And we just praise God. Thank God for this beautiful church. Thank God for all of you. We give a shout out to Jeep. We give a shout out to Jackie Fisher, Dustina, and so many other people. Shout out to David Carter. David, we know you'll be online a little bit later on. All of our friends in Kenya and Jamaica and Uganda, all of our friends in Europe, Annika and in Sweden, all of our friends all over the United States of America and the nations as we present to you the online church where we gather every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time to present the Word of God. No, we're not trying to build up a big congregation. We're try not trying to build a mega church. We just want people to know that Jesus loves them and we especially reach out to the sick and shut in, those who are unchurched, those who are in transition, those who do not have a church home, we uh, reach out to those of you who can't get out to go to church. We want you to know that all you have to do is dial a set of numbers on your phone and you're right here with us in the life-changing online church brought to you by Back to Basics Ministries. And we thank God. We praise God. We praise God. You can uh, connect with us either by internet or by your phone. It's just that easy. So tell your friends, tell people that they don't have to sit home on Sunday morning feeling guilty because they didn't go to church. Tell them that they can dial up and be right here with us. And, um, the, and the anointing is here. The anointing is here. There's a great anointing on this ministry. So we say hello to you once again on behalf of Jackie Carter and, and your servant. Praise God. Jackie does uh, her work at the, the brick and mortar church at this time on Sunday. And um, we uh, go where God has called us to serve. But we're united in this effort to present the gospel to this dying world. Richard Smallwood was singing, There is a bomb in Gilead. He says, I tried him and I know him. He's a healer. He's a doctor. He's a lawyer. He's whatever you need, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to try him. Praise God. I mean, by faith, try him. If you're sick in your body, you call on the name of the Lord. You claim the scriptures. You read those scriptures about healing. Read the Bible about what God did for others and say, hey, Lord, Hey, Lord, I'm hurting too. Lord, I need a blessing. And ask the Lord. Jesus said, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open. Praise God. I see uh, Ryan Trogler is on board today. And uh, just a few weeks ago, his wife asked the Lord to heal her eyes. And, and Ryan's given us a good report every week and so we just praise God and uh, since I see Ryan on board we're going to ask Ryan to come and lead us in prayer uh, good morning pastor good morning church good morning uh, yeah uh, to give you a report and an update uh, she is doing uh, improving every day I pray okay. I give God all the praise for it praise God. okay Heavenly Father we want to thank you for making another day today. We want to thank you for providing all of our needs. <clears throat> we want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and coming up out of the grave because you defeated the grave and death. <clears throat> Lord, we just want you to come down and, and heal all the people and, and hear our pleas to, for healing and, and for you to come into our hearts and our souls, and Lord. and just, just uh, We know you're going to be with us every step of the way. And we just, and we also want to pray for the people out out west who've been affected by the floods and the tornadoes, and and, all, and you know put a protection, uh, bless all the pastors and and all the churches and all of our brothers and sisters in Christ out there. And we want to 
uh, knowledge that we want you to come down and give Pastor Carter here the, the knowledge and the wisdom to teach us your word today again, Lord. And we just want to say we thank you, we love you, we praise you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ, precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Ryan. We appreciate you, Ryan. I appreciate you very much, and thank you for your prayers. And as you <coughs> continue to be an intercessor and continue to pray for this ministry and for each and every one, and we're praying for you too. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I see David Carter is on with us from Dubai. We'll hear from David a little bit later on. You know, this is powerful ministry. God is reaching out even across the ocean to Dubai where we have a young brother he's a graduate of our school of ministry and uh, doing a great work in Dubai praise God speaking of the school of ministry uh, David I'm just excited um, David graduated two years ago with the back and an associate's degree from the back to basic school of ministry since then we've gone on and we've started the Paul Beckley School of Prophecy, which is in its second year. And I want to announce, we're excited here back to basics. Ladies and gentlemen, hey Jackie Fisher, we, we shall be getting the official word sometime this week about the accreditation for the Back to Basics School of Ministry. We will be fully accredited, ladies and gentlemen, in the Back to Basics School of Ministry. This coming week they shall make that official. And, and uh, also concerning the Paul Begley School of Prophecy, Paul Begley School of Prophecy will be uh, officially accredited next year, a year from now. So, uh, so it's a three-year process for accreditation. We shall be getting accreditation for the Back to Basics School of Ministry. This week they, they said they will send out the, the official announcement that we are fully accredited. So that means that David Carter and all who have taken courses with this ministry um, your, your, your work is now accredited. You are now part of an accredited Bible college, an accredited institution. So we give God the glory about that. That's one thing that we're shouting about. And uh, the second thing we're shouting about, and many of you have been instrumental in helping us to do this, the bank, the bank will be sending, wiring the money to Kenya, to Bishop Elijah, in Kenya to uh, the money to build their church in Kenya ladies and gentlemen uh, we have reached the goal and that and we can send the money the the bank I talked with them on Friday and they will um, wire that money out tomorrow to our friends in to the bank in Kenya where our friends in Western Kenya can now uh, start and complete the building of the new church, hallelujah, in western Kenya. I'm shouting deep down in my sanctified soul, ladies and gentlemen. I'm shouting because of what God is doing, and, and God is using you. I want to thank you all for your love, and, and many are not online with us right now who have contributed to raising the money for the church in Kenya. I want to thank each and every one of you for your sacrifice and for your labor and love. And I pray that God will return to you 100 fold. Ladies and gentlemen. You really don't know what this means to the Kenyans. Uh, they have been worshiping under trees. Sitting out on the ground. In all kinds of weather. Uh, 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 sometimes they might have a plastic canopy over them. But now they will be able to build their own church. Uh, Pastor Elijah can now have his own housing uh, quarters in that building on the second floor of that building and then they will have a place where they can launch that ministry that's going throughout Kenya and and souls are being saved Elijah sent me some photos today of people they baptized yesterday in western Kenya they baptized people yesterday in a river in western Kenya and they can't wait to see their building come up so ladies and gentlemen what you're doing is not in vain it's not in vain your labor is not in vain in the Lord and I love you for what you're doing I praise God for you and we thank God for his great work and and uh, we can go after we get the church in Kenya built we can help someone else somewhere else in the world to help build a, 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 a church we need the brick and mortar churches ladies and gentlemen people need a place where they can meet praise God 
and the online church can be like the pioneer. We call ourselves the new frontier where we can go. We're the advance guard. We're like the scouts who go out seeking a place and then uh, plant the gospel and then the pastors can come and then they can build in those areas. So it takes teamwork. It takes, it takes uh, uh, the whole body to do this. So we praise God. And you are a part of this. You are a part of this. This is not a Lone Ranger thing. This is something that you are a part of. And we love you for this. And bless God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So uh, we're kind of excited. Excited about the accreditation. Oh, I just I want you all to go on the website. www.backtobasicsministriesinc.inc www.backtobasicsministriesinc.inc dot com and uh, maybe Jeep or somebody can type that into the chat window www it's right here behind me uh, www back to basics ministries inc dot com and um, see the exciting things that are happening in this ministry ladies and gentlemen as as we are doing a three pronged thing number one we're setting up for our international Bible study to begin on September 4th this year. An international Bible study where we bring people from different nations on at the same time live and we're going to teach the Bible. God has given me a curriculum and said teach the Bible. We're going to go from Genesis to Revelation. It will take us uh, approximately 18 months to thoroughly complete teaching the Bible and studying the Bible, but we will start in September and go online and look at the Bible study. You'll see your homework assignments already there, what you're to read as we get ready for the first lesson. It's free. Everything's free for everyone. I mean, there should be no excuse for anyone not knowing the Bible when we go through these 18 months of teaching. We go through... Um, Okay, Ryan, put on there www.backtobasicsministries, Inc. Put Inc. behind ministries, Inc.com, I-N-C, Inc.com. Praise God. www.backtobasicsministries, Inc.com. Thanks, Ryan, and we praise God. And so the Bible study is going to be life-changing. It's free. Anybody can, can attend. Anybody can learn from it. And we're so excited about this, so excited about this whole thing. Then um, the, the Back to Basic School of Ministry, um, I've been working for three years with the Paul Vega School of Prophecy. I committed myself to five years to Pastor Paul. This is the third year. By next year, next year we'll be fully accredited. And now the Lord says, now it's time to go back and build up the Back to Basic School of Ministry which we've been neglect neglecting for a while. Now we are fully accredited. That means we can set up um, um, programs. We, 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 will, we will advance our programs to, to present David. Now we can go to the bachelor's degree program and the master's and the doctoral program. We're going to add these programs in September and we're going to reduce the cost. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to reduce the cost. And uh, we're not trying to steal anybody from any school, but our costs are going to be l low. We're offering courses for $150, 12 week courses for $150, three credits in an, an accredited school. So if you know anyone who wants to attend school and really has a rough time financially, ask them to get in touch with us to enroll in the Back to Basic School of Ministry and uh, where we have made these courses affordable, affordable all over the globe. These uh, courses will be affordable, and we will present an online curriculum to the people. So you'll see all this on the website and uh, all about the School of Ministry, the Bible study, and the online church. We talk a lot about the online church on the website. So uh, thanks, Ryan. You got it. Uh, back to basics ministries inc dot com. Click on that, and you're right there. Uh, don't click on it right now, but later on, click on it, and and you'll see this what this ministry is doing. And you are a part of this ministry. 
Well, bless God. We're going to ask uh, our friend uh, Jackie Fisher from Kentucky to read the scripture. And we're going to ask Jackie to read uh, from Leviticus chapter 23. We're going to start from Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 through 22. And there we're going to take a look at what happened on the day of Pentecost as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Don't you just appreciate Jackie Fisher reading the scripture for us? I do. Uh, well, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Carter. I will be reading from Leviticus 23, verse 15 through 22. And ye shall count unto you from tomorrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, Sabbath shall you number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out of your habitation two wave loads of two tenth meals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruit unto the Lord. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of their first year, and one bullock and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord, with their meat offering and their drink offering, even an offering made by fire a sweet favor unto the Lord. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruit for a wave offering before the Lord with the two lambs. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the self-same day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy fields when thou reapest. Neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. And that's Leviticus 23, 15 through 22. Praise God. Praise God. Our sister Jackie Fisher, we thank God for you for reading the scriptures. We're in Leviticus chapter 23, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> In Leviticus chapter 23, uh, next you'll hear from, uh, from Acts chapter 2, which we've read in the last couple of weeks. We'll be going to Acts chapter 2, but let's take a look at Leviticus 23 and 15 through 22. Thanks, thanks again, Jackie Fisher, for reading the scripture. Now, you know, as she was reading the scripture, you're probably saying, now what's this have to do with me? You know, uh, uh, you show... Uh, bring the sheaf of the wave offering. What's a, what's a wave offering? And and uh, uh, seven Sabbaths. What are seven Sabbaths? And and as you read the Old Testament, a lot of people don't even study the Old Testament. There are a lot of preachers who don't even preach from the Old Testament. There are a lot of Christians who call themselves New Testament Christians, and they throw out the old. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't throw out the Old Testament because the Old Testament. And the New Testament make up the Holy Bible. The 39 books of the Old Testament are very, very important to where we are. We can start at Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We can stop there and, and, and develop a message. Well, why did God create the heaven and the earth? And when the deal goes down, you'll see that God created the heaven and the earth for mankind so that Jesus, the Son of God, could have a 
an eternal partner, an eternal companion to rule the whole earth. And when you look at everything that took place from Genesis 1-1, we see how Satan usurped the authority that God had given to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were, were supposed to be that mankind who would be the eternal partner of Jesus Christ. God walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the evening. They fellowshiped together. But then Adam and Eve sinned and caused all mankind to be born in sin, shaped in iniquity. And so Satan became the ruler of the world. Satan became the ruler of the world that God had created man to rule. So when you look at the Old Testament, you cannot throw out the Old Testament, ladies and gentlemen, and, 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 and just uh, start preaching from the New Testament, Jesus, 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 because Jesus was in the beginning. The Word was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. There are people have they have no clue as to who the Holy Ghost is and, and his importance. Well, the Holy Spirit was in the beginning with God. And Genesis 1, 3 says, and God said, light be. And when God spoke, light be, Jesus uh, 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 put his hand on the shoulder of the Holy Ghost and said, God said, light be. And then the Holy Spirit created light. And light came, light out of darkness came light, ladies and gentlemen. And half of darkness had to give up its domain because light came. And light said, okay, 12 hours belong to me. You, have, uh, you no longer have 24 hours darkness. I have 12 and you have 12. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to learn this from the Old Testament. So when we look at Bible study, and, 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 and it's important... Everything in the Old Testament is important to what we read in the New Testament. The New Testament is the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Old Testament. And so when you get into Leviticus, books like Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you'll say, wow, this is confusing. I mean, all these offerings, all these sacrifices, and, and, and all of this furniture in the tabernacle, and this and that, and, and, and a lot of people do not understand. But you, if you will follow us starting September the 4th at 7 o'clock p.m. and every Wednesday for one hour, we're going to walk through the Bible. We're going to take it uh, precept upon precept. We're going to look at what God says. And we're going to uh, do the first 12 weeks uh, looking at Genesis and Exodus. And then we'll just take a segment of the Bible at, at one time. We'll start with the uh, books of the, the, the law or the Torah or the Pentateuch. We'll spend 12 weeks studying the Pentateuch. Then we'll take 12 weeks and we'll study the books of Old Testament history. Then we'll take 12 weeks and we'll study the books of poetry. Then we'll take 12 weeks and, oh, it's exciting already. Jackie Fisher, I'm excited already. Then we'll take 12 weeks and we'll study the uh, major prophets. Then we'll take 12 more weeks and we'll study the minor prophets. Then we'll take 12 weeks and we'll look at the intertestamental period of time. What happened during the intertestamental period, those 400 years when God did not speak to, to mankind? We're going to take a look at what happened during that time and the development of the synagogue and the development of the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes and set the tone for the, the arrival of Jesus on the scene. Then we will take a 12-week segment and look at the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then we will take a 12-week segment and we look at the book of Acts. Yes, we will spend 12 weeks in the book of Acts and we look at the wonderful things that the Holy Spirit did in the book of Acts. Ladies and gentlemen, even as we study those 12 weeks in the book of Acts about the Holy Spirit, people will have a revelation of who the Holy Spirit is. And then we take a look at the Pauline epistles, 12 weeks studying Paul's letters, and then 12 weeks studying uh, the general epistles, and then we take 12 weeks and study the book of Revelation. We're talking about a powerful, life-changing Bible study. It won't cost anybody anything. Not a penny, ladies and gentlemen. It's free for all. And we're, we're having people sign up now, register now for this online 
Bible study. Meet with me every Wednesday night uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. starting September 4th. And when we finish with this course, everybody who sticks with this course will have a commanding understanding of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. There should be no more uh, guesswork, no more, uh, no more ignorance. We should know the Bible in and out. And then when we finish, we'll go back and do it again from a different perspective. Praise God. I mean, God, the Holy Spirit, is putting this together because God loves you. And so tell people, tell people, tell your friends. Tell them about the Bible study. Tell them they can go to our website and they can enroll today. Tell them they can send us an email or give us a call and we can enroll them today. And the kicker is, if anyone wants to enroll in our school, they will get credit. They will get credit, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, monitoring, monitoring the uh, Wednesday night Bible studies. We will give, if they follow the Wednesday night Bible study, we will give them credit towards a degree if they so desire. So um, that's a, a long commercial. I know I'm supposed to be preaching about Leviticus right now, but I uh, just felt led by the Holy Spirit to let you know what we're doing so that people do not have to live in ignorance. And, and, and uh, as we humbly obey God and let the Lord use us, it does not yet appear what we shall be. God wants to build up the body of Christ. And it all starts with the book of Genesis. So when you're reading Leviticus and, and you're reading along with Jackie Fisher and you say uh, uh, seven Sabbaths and a meat offering and a sheaf and the sheaves and the wave offerings, uh, 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 what's this all mean? And flour and leaven and all this and seven lambs without blemish, and young bullocks, and rams, and all that. I don't understand this. But as we go through the study of the Bible, you'll see why God gave his people these uh, requirements for worshiping him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But God has a way. He's got a method that he wants people to follow in order to come to him. You can't, uh, a lot of people claim they're Christians, but they don't know Christ. How can you be a Christian without knowing Christ? A lot of people claim to know God, but don't understand the Bible. How can you understand the Bible if you do not study? And so we're making it possible that anybody can understand the Bible. Pastors are going to be bringing their congregations on board all at the same time ladies and gentlemen we will have pastors in some of our african churches uh who have their whole entire congregation congregations listening and learning as we teach and so we give god the glory honor praise we solicit your prayers that god to get all the glory so that there be an understanding now let's look at this passage in leviticus 15 and 22 and let's see why, why uh, uh, we uh, chose to ask uh, our sister Jackie Fisher to read from uh, Leviticus 15, Leviticus, um, Leviticus 23, 15 through 22. Okay, on that day, that day, uh, as we celebrate, celebrate Pentecost today, the first day of Pentecost, ladies and gentlemen, took place 50 days after the death of Jesus on the cross. However, God had prophesied it and laid the groundwork for it with his people hundreds of years uh, before Jesus came on the scene. And so the Jews were worshiping and, and what they were doing, uh, they were worshiping, worshiping uh, in a typical situation. In other words, what they were doing was a type of what would take place when Jesus came. And so all of the Old Testament, ladies and gentlemen, has a purpose. Has a purpose. And much of the Old Testament is a type. In other words, it's a symbol. It's a, it's a, a shadow of the things that would take place in the New Testament. And this whole thing about the day of Pentecost and the celebration of Pentecost that churches all over the world are celebrating today, it begins in the Old Testament 
when God has a plan. You see, God has a vision. God says, I know the plans I have for you. God has a vision. God gave the people a method of worship of him, a form of worship that would, 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 would be a, a, uh, a prelude to what type of worship would take place when God himself invaded the earth to live inside of mankind. So when we look at Pentecost, we're looking at God uh, sanctifying the people, giving them a form of worship, telling them how to worship him, bring me two bullocks, bring me a male and a female, <clears throat> bring me two loaves of bread, and the priest will take the bread and burn the bread, and, and, and this will happen and this will happen, and it all points to Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, dying on the cross, being buried, being resurrected from the dead, and then, and then fulfilling of the promise that God made to the, the believers through Jesus Christ when he said, it is expedient to you that I go away, but I will come back and receive you unto myself. I will send you the Comforter. He will teach you all things. And Jesus promised his disciples, he said, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Ladies and gentlemen, God's purpose for creating mankind was so that Jesus Christ could have a, an eternal companion so that he, he, along with his bride, the church, his eternal companion, can co-rule the earth that God has made, that God has given unto Jesus to be co-rulers. And so in order to co-rule or rule as a joint heir with Christ, then people have to first of all be born again. Receive Jesus as Lord. You're not going to be a co-ruler if you're just going to church and you've not given your heart to Jesus. You're not going to be a co-ruler if you continue to live in sin. You're not going to be a co-ruler if you just label yourself as a Christian but will not commit to Jesus Christ. You're not going to be a co-ruler if you study the Koran. You're not going to be a co-ruler if you follow Confucius. No, you're not going to be a co-ruler if you worship Allah. No, you can be a co-ruler with Jesus Christ if you worship God through Jesus Christ and receive him as Savior and Lord. The scripture says, For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Now, on the day for rest, we're talking about Pentecost, the people must give a grain, a gift of grain and a sheep to the Lord. So this whole thing about Pentecost began with the people had to give a gift of grain and a sheep to the Lord. It's also called the uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, um, uh, the grain harvest. Okay? After this, they must count seven weeks. They must keep counting for 50 days until the day after the seventh Saturday. And so, uh, on the day that the people were to give in the Old Testament, during the time of Jesus, which was uh, over a thousand years after this book of Leviticus was written, when the people celebrated Pentecost at the time of the death of Jesus, the people had given their grain offering to the priest. They had given their, their, their animals to the priest and uh, given two sheep or two goats. And they had to bring two male sheep. Remember, one was a scapegoat. He, he's the one that was sent into the wilderness to take away the sin of the people. But while they were going through this religious ritual in Jerusalem, Jesus was hung on the cross, ladies and gentlemen. He was hung on the cross. And, and the scripture in Leviticus 23, compare that with what the Gospels say, and the whole thing about the 23rd chapter of Leviticus is all about Jesus, the sacrificial Lamb of God who was given as an offering. And in this case, <clears throat> this case in Leviticus, he was given as a wave offering, a bread offering, a grain offering. And then 49 uh, 
days after, actually 50 days after, on the day of Pentecost, 40, count 49 more days, and the day of Pentecost came, and it was the day of Pentecost that 50 days after the death of Jesus, 50 days after the death of Jesus, or seven Sabbaths, which is 49 days, Jesus poured out the Spirit upon the church. And so at the same time, the Jews who had rejected Jesus, they were in Jerusalem going through the rituals of celebrating the day of Pentecost the same way they had celebrated since uh, Moses was given this law by God when they were going through the wilderness. Each family brought their two loaves of bread and, their, and, and collectively Israel brought two animals to the priest to sacrifice. They brought two male sheep. The priest burned the grain and the animals as a gift to the Lord. The smell of them while they were burning was to make God happy. And that's the way it was until the death of Jesus. The death of Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, put this entire sacrificial system to rest because everything they had done up until the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, everything was just a type, a shadow of what would take place when Jesus gave himself as an offering for all mankind. One man made an offering for all mankind. And so when you read the Old Testament scriptures, all of the Old Testament scriptures is a shadow pointing to Jesus who would make the sacrifice for all mankind. Keep in mind God's plan in the beginning when he said, let us make man in our image. God's got a plan, ladies and gentlemen. Let us make man in in our image, and after our image, let us make man. God made man in his own image. The fact that God made man in his own image aggravated the devil to hatred. The devil hates mankind. The devil said, well, why is he making man after his own image? Uh, I'm the one he ought to, whose image ought to be up there because I was close to God and I was Lucifer. I was a, 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 I, I control the, the music and the worship, but Lucifer lost his first estate. He lost his position, and, and when he lost his position, he also took the choir out of heaven. He took the song and the singing and the praise and the worship out of heaven, and so God created Adam, shaped him out of dirt blew his breath in him. And then and then at a certain time he put Adam to sleep, took one of Adam's ribs and created woman and told Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over all of the earth. In other words, God gave to Adam and Eve the dominion that Lucifer had when Lucifer was in heaven with God. So that angered Lucifer. He hates mankind. And, and when he heard about uh, uh, a Messiah coming, he did all he could to destroy that seed from coming into the earth. And now that Jesus has given his life and has risen from the dead, the devil's doing all he can to get people to discount Jesus, to not believe Jesus, not obey him. Satan hates worshipers, and he's doing all he can to discredit Jesus. But we've got to be steadfast, ladies and gentlemen, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So we look at Pentecost as a, a celebration of the first harvest, the grain, the grain harvest. After they had planted their, they had planted their crops and, har and worked their crops and harvested their crops, they offered the first two loaves of bread unto God from the harvest. The first two loaves were offered unto God. And Jesus later on said, uh, uh, the scripture, he was the first fruits of them that slept. Okay, Jesus offered himself unto God as, as, as uh, the great, uh, uh, the harvest, the Son of God, the, the, the one, only one who could take away our sins. And so Pentecost means 50. The word means 50, 5 zero, 50 days after the death of Jesus. But long before Jesus died on the cross, God had given the Jews the word Pentecost to mean 50 days, 50 days after they offered the grain to God and they offered the two animals to God, 
where the, the, the uh, priests would burn the grain and burn the animals. Fifty days later, they were to have a celebration. And ladies and gentlemen, when you go into the New Testament... This is why you cannot disassociate the New Testament from the Old Testament. When you go into the New Testament, you'll see that 50 days after Jesus was crucified, 50 days starting with that last Saturday, and add 49 days to it, you'll see Jesus rising from the dead, and then he appeared for 40 days, and then he uh, um, ascended into heaven. And 10 days after he ascended into heaven, on the 50th day, then flip to Acts chapter 2, please, and I'll show you in the scripture what happened. On the 50th day, on the day of Pentecost, hundreds of years after Leviticus was written, As the Jews who had rejected Jesus were still going through their form of worship, as they were offering their animals to the priests to go offer to God and their grain unto God as a wave offering, look at what took place also in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 2, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya around Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jew, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. Many, many years, hundreds of years after Leviticus 23 was written. Leviticus 23 is a type. It's a symbol. It's a shadow of what would take place when God himself the same one who said, let us make man in our image. The same one who in the beginning created the heavens and the earth. When God himself decided, no longer will I dwell in this tabernacle that they have made for me. No longer will I dwell in this temple that they have built for me. This temple that Solomon built and then... Uh, uh, um, was rebuilt again in the time of Haggai and, and, and Nehemiah, built by Zerubbabel. Uh, no longer will I dwell in this temple that was rebuilt by Herod the Great. No, I will dwell in the hearts of my people. And on the day of Pentecost, ladies and gentlemen, God Almighty, the Almighty God who created the heaven and the earth, who said no building could contain me. The great I am, Jehovah, Elohim, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, in all the fullness of his power. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this same God, according to Acts 22, Acts, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, there was the sound of a rushing mighty wind and the Holy Spirit God himself, Elohim, 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in the person of the Holy Spirit, came upon the church and indwelt every believer. And ever since that time, anyone who seriously confesses Jesus as Lord and commits their life to Him and receives Him as Lord and Savior receives the Holy Spirit. We're not talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen. We're not talking about the gifts of the Spirit. We're not talking about anything. We're talking about what happens when a person receives Jesus Christ as Lord. This same Holy Spirit enters into them, and they are born again by the Spirit of God. And then, as they continue worshiping God and obeying God, then we see the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. Then we get into the gifts of the Spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, when, when all of these people, the Parthians and Medes and Elamites and Mesopotamians and Cappadocians and Pontians and Asians and Phrygians and Pamphylians and Libyans and Cyrenaeans all uh, received the Holy Spirit, the Bible said they began to speak with, with uh, other tongues. In other words, on this initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to get this. If you don't get it, you'll walk around in confusion like a whole lot of other people in the church. Get this. In the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, the gift of tongues given to the believers was the gift of the then known languages, ladies and gentlemen, the languages of the world. God gave to ignorant, unlearned, unschooled uh, men and women. They did not have a chance to attend the Back to Basic School of Ministry or the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. They did not have a chance to read textbooks or download CDs or tapes or, or, or DVDs. No, they downloaded Jesus Christ. They downloaded the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with languages that they had not gone to school to learn, and they had never spoken them before. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. Since that happening, theologians and so-called biblical scholars are so messed up, so confused the people with tongues and all this. Yes, tongues did come. I'm talking about prayer language, individual prayer language for people. Speaking in an unknown tongue. Tongues is real. And Paul teaches well about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14. But when we speak and preach from Acts chapter 2, we're not talking about speaking in tongues or people speaking in their own prayer language. No, this was not what happened on the day of Pentecost. Speaking in tongues came later, as Paul so eloquently describes in his writings and uh, especially in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14. But you don't get this if you don't read the Bible. Pastors don't get this if they don't study the Bible before they open, some of them open their dumb mouths. Some of them open their dumb mouths and preach dumb stuff because it's not of the Lord. But when you preach the Bible and when you put everything in perspective and, and trust the Word of God, the Word of God will defend itself. On the day of Pentecost, men and women in that crowd outside of that upper room in Jerusalem heard unlearned Galileans, ignorant men who had not had the opportunity to go to school. They were speaking in the Parthian language, the Median language, the Elamite language, the Mesopotamian language, the Judean language, the Cappadocian language. The language of the Pontus and, of Pontus and Asia, the Phrygian language, the Pamphylian language, and many other languages, they were speaking in those languages, and they had never learned those languages. Yet the people in the audience, ladies and gentlemen, said, they're speaking in our languages, and they are talking about the wonders of God. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. At the same time, the previous year and previous years, it was at the exact time where the priests were burning the bread, the loaves of bread, and sacrificing the animals on the altar. But 
because Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and rose again from the dead, that old system of sacrifice that Jackie Fisher read about in uh, Leviticus 23, that old system was laid to rest, no longer applicable to touching the heart of God. The Old Testament period came to an end, ladies and gentlemen, and the New Testament period begun, began, and the church was born on the day of Pentecost. The church was born on the day of Pentecost. And so we'll take that up maybe next time, what happened after the church was born. And so, so look at the big picture. In the beginning, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit talked together. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You might want to ask yourself, why did he create the heavens and the earth? So that he could find a place to raise up a people, to be a co-partner, an heir with his son, Jesus Christ, to co-rule the earth. In the meantime, God created Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve sinned and gave their authority to Satan. Satan ruled the world. Then God sent his only son, Jesus, to take back the keys that Adam had stolen from the world, from, from Adam had stolen, from, uh, Satan had stolen from Adam. And God restored that authority to mankind. God restored the authority to mankind. Now we see on the day of Pentecost, God coming, coming. He realized how Adam had messed up. He realized how every man had sinned prior to Jesus. Jesus had never sinned. And now God comes uh, as the icing on the cake to make sure, ladies and gentlemen, to make sure that you and I have a right to the tree of life. God decided, I will come and dwell among you. And I will guide you in spirit and in truth. And so now we have the church, ladies and gentlemen, the birth of the church on the day of Pentecost, where God comes to live inside of believers, inside of mankind, to guarantee us the victory, to guarantee us that heaven belongs to us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Oh, we shall have troubles. But God comes to let us know that no power, no authority can destroy what Jesus has won for us. And God comes to live inside of us. And the moment anybody, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, the moment you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior and repent of your sins and commit your life to Jesus, this same Holy Spirit will come and live inside of you. Then He will give you gifts. He will give you gifts. Not the theologians. Don't let the theologians mess over your gifts. Don't let the Bible scholars mess over your gifts. God will give you gifts as he sees fit. But right now we end this with God giving the church the ability to preach the word of God in all the languages known on the earth. And when Peter stood up and preached, 3,000 souls were saved. Can you imagine, Jackie Fisher, you preaching and 3,000 souls were saved? Can you imagine that, Dustina? 3,000 souls were added to the church. And a few days later, Peter preached again, and 5,000 souls were added. Why? Because God came to dwell on earth. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. Jesus said, greater things than these shall you do. Ryan, you shall do greater things than Jesus because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Father God, we just thank you for this message. We praise you. We bless you. We honor you. We pray that people all over the world will hear this message and will commit their lives to you and believe the scriptures. Believe the scriptures to study, to show ourselves proved, approved unto you. Workmen who needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. 
Thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Thank you for raising him from the dead. Thank you for this day of Pentecost where we celebrate the birth of the church. Hallelujah. Happy birthday, church. Happy birthday, church. Happy birthday, church. May the church rise up and give God the glory. May the church rise up and give God the glory. May the Holy Spirit rise up in us. Rise up in us. In Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to end our recording here. And I invite uh, comments and questions. And any you pastors, uh, uh, play this over and over again for your congregation. And, and uh, study the Word of God. Then, all of you, go to my website and get ready. Let's get ready for a serious Bible study starting in September. In the meantime, look at what God is doing in the, uh, the, the school of ministry and how he's opening it up. Ladies and gentlemen, praise God. I just want to add this. We will start in September with a curriculum of over 60 courses. A curriculum of over 60 courses where people can take a variety of courses and, and, and uh, in, in just 15 credits for your uh, associate degree, 15 credits for a bachelor's degree, 15 for a master's, and 15 for a doctor's degree. We've got over 60 courses, and each course only costs $150. Now, you can't beat that. Go ahead and look at my website when you get a chance. Give me a call. We'll talk.